question is, like, what's the process that students have to go through to adopt a dog? Um, they have to fill out an application, and uh, we look at that and assess it based on how many applications we get for that animal. They do have to wait two weeks after we get them to put in an application so that they don't just go, oh, this one's really cute, I want it. They get to know the animal first to make sure that it's a fit. If they have any other dogs, if it's a dog, then they bring that dog in and we do it meet and greet between the dogs and make sure that there's not going to be any major fights and that they're going to get along okay together. After that happens, then it's just the end of the term or when we are done with their use here, then they get to go. Explain breeds of dogs at school, like what different kind of breeds do you guys The majority of them are mixes that come in or they're hounds. So beagles are common, um, some of the other bigger hounds, hunting dogs, and they end up in the shelters a lot because when they don't hunt well, then, then the people just take them to the shelter. So that's primarily, and then just mixes. Does the school adopt rescue dogs? That's basically what we're doing. The, yeah, the so we have specific shelters that we work with. Um, and so where they get theirs from, you know, they can kind of come from anywhere. Most of the time they come from the county that the shelter is located in. So they're usually strays or their owner surrender animals and things like that. What kind of collars do you guys use? Um, most of the time what we use is uh, the gentle leaders and those are ones that have a collar that goes around the neck and then it also has one that goes around the nose so that when they're leading if they're a big puller or anything when they get to the end of it it pulls them back gently um, so they know to stop instead of putting pressure on their trachea otherwise we use harnesses they do have to have um, either the gentle leader or the harness and then they also have a slip lead which is just one where uh, it just goes around and it's through a loop so it tightens if they pull too hard. So. Who adopts the dogs when school is done? Just anybody? Uh, if their application is accepted. So um, instructors and staff have the first choice as far as that goes and then it's the students and then family members or people outside of the school. So they go to all over. What's the adoption fee? $25. And when they get done, they are up to date on all of their vaccinations. They've been uh, heartworm tested or if it's cat feline leukemia tested, um, they've been spayed or neutered, um, microchipped, so they're all ready to go. What kind of food do the dogs eat? Purina EN, and that's an enteric diet because it's a really high stress situation here for them to be caged, and then we do use them for the students to learn. So uh, we put them on EN, which is a gentler diet, and it makes it so they're less likely to develop diarrhea and other stomach upset due to stress. Are the dogs on a specific schedule? So students get here at 5.45 in the morning, and they walk the dogs uh, quickly just to go out and eliminate, and then they come back in, they get fed, and then they go out on um, like a rotation type basis, and they're out for 40 minutes then to walk, 40 to 45 minutes to walk. Um, and then they'll just come in and switch. And during that time they're out, then the other students are cleaning the kennels and, and getting everything else ready to go for the day. Uh, the cats, or, and then the kennel in the evening starts at four o'clock and they just repeat everything. All the students that are on kennel for that day also have to do what we call a midday, where they take a dog out for 20 minutes and a cat out for 20 minutes. So they're responsible for both a dog and a cat. Do dogs have any illnesses? Occasionally they'll come in. Uh, the things we most commonly see are parasites. So intestinal worms or um, other things that, that live in the stool that causes them to, to have issue. Other than that, just general infections, like they occasionally get sick. Our cats a lot of times will come in with upper respiratory disease uh, because they're viruses and most of them have been exposed to that while they're in the shelter or even from mom before they ever got to the shelter. So we treat those as they come up, but usually just antibiotics and things. So we do occasionally have uh, older animals that come in that have heart disease. Uh, we have some that come in that have heartworm that we treat for heartworm. That's pretty much what we typically have. 
what type of surgeries are, prefer are performed on the dogs? So mostly just spaying or neutering the animal. We've had one in here where we tacked their stomach, where uh, it's a, the big dogs are more prone to having their stomach flip or get they get bloat. Uh, so that's a common thing that we'll do is tack the stomach to the body wall so it can't flip over. So if you guys saw Marley and me, no, I had a that. You have, yeah. yeah. So that's what we're trying to prevent. The students like perform the surgery. They participate, so they're the anesthetist. Um, they do all of the pre-anesthetic uh, blood work, they monitor the patient during anesthesia, and then they take care of them post-operatively, but the DVM or the doctor is the one that actually performs the surgery. Okay. Do you put chips in the dogs? We microchip them. Okay. Do you guys train all the dogs? Uh, the students work with them. We have one class where they actually do some training. Uh, it's part of the course but unless that's offered, unless that's a course that we're having at that point in time, then they don't go through official training. Okay. Do the dogs have specific toys? They do. They all have um, a nylon bone that is there for them to chew on to alleviate boredom, and then they all get a calm, and that's one of those big rubber things, and we put um, hard food and soft food in there, and then we freeze it, and then they can work on that throughout the day, so it helps for them boredom. How can people adopt dog, dogs from a shelter? From a shelter? Yeah. Usually you go to the shelter and you just find one that you like. It depends on the shelter as far as uh, what their prerequisites are. So a lot of them have different, different things that they require. Um, some of them make sure that you've got a fenced-in yard and um, you know, then hopefully they know their animals well enough to know if they're okay with children or cats or anything like that that you need to be careful of in your home. Okay.